it's cool. Whew. Us is directed by Jordan Peele, also written by Jordan Peele. Uh, we have stars Lupita Nyong'o, Winston Duke, and Madison Curry, who plays young Lupita Nyong'o. And I'm not gonna really tell you the synopsis. All you you should know is that there's doppelgangers, and that's pretty much it. That's all I'll pretty much say. First thing I'll start off with is right now, if the Oscars for movies that came out in 2019 were be, to be right now, Lupita Nyong'o would floor everybody. Like it won't even be close. It's almost reminiscent of James McAvoy's performance, and I may have, I may say James McAvoy obviously may have a better performance because he literally had to pay 21, 22 personalities, where she's only playing two different people. But it's just the fact that her doppelganger is pretty much a very prominent character, and she basically plays somebody different. It's not even close as to what the standout is in this movie. Lupita Nyong'o is easily the best thing in Us. Winston Duke is also amazing as her husband, Gabe, who was kind of this quirky kind of dad. Evan Alex plays her, her son, Shadidi. Um, Shadidi Wright Joseph, who plays her daughter, who is also amazing in this film. Elizabeth Moff and Tim Head Decker, Jesus, I'm terrible with names. They also br bring pretty good performances in this movie. My biggest complaint with Get Out was that while it was a pretty spotless uh, screenplay, I did feel like directing wise and Jordan Peele's voice wasn't really felt in that movie. I felt like that could have been anybody who directed that film to where us is just a complete departure from the first shot like i'm telling you like from the beginning you're like okay this man's in a different bag already the cinematography that he's able to get with the cinematographer is amazing off rip it's just a darker dar just a darker directorial chair that jordan peele decided to take within us that i just thought that was missing in get out that probably could have propelled get out to that upper echelon for me. The score by Michael Abels has been on repeat ever since I watched this movie. I'm recording this on Saturday. I saw it on Friday and I had to watch it again. I'm sorry, I watched it on Thursday and I had to watch it again on Friday. I've been listening to that score over and over again. It's just that amazing. It's a, it's a nice little blend of kind of a hip hop, kind of a, you know, jazz fusion, but with also like the typical score violins. They're very violent that they come in. Oh my God goodness the score is so amazing but obviously the main reason why we're here for Jordan Peele's movies are the story and what you want and what you want to hear from me is what I think about it and the first thing I'll say is I don't want Jordan Peele to fall into the problem that I personally have with M. Night Shyamalan which isn't really a problem it's just the fact that we know something is coming we know there's something deeper than we know there's some sort of a twist and you are expecting it subconsciously or consciously you are like I want to know what the big aha moment is in this movie and to a lot of people, we kind of figured it out during the movie, and that kind of takes away from like the surprise of everything. So we're like, if this movie was done by a nobody, you would you would genuinely appreciate the end that much more because you were not expecting what happens at the end. So that in turn takes me to the story to where I can't really say too much because obviously that'll be a spoiler. But I will say the first two acts are pretty amazing. I feel like it keeps pace and actually the first act is actually pretty slow it's actually a pretty slow burn to begin with to where like obviously like when the, the doppelgangers come into play then the movie kind of picks up and then the last third uh of the movie is pretty much you know non-stop 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 to where the third act is kind of where i have my problems with the movie to where it kind of gets i won't say wacky but it kind of starts to leave all those loose ends a little bit to where like it's not as tight as the movie I should say it's not as tight in the third act and there's a humongous humongous exposition scene in that third act that's just like while I understand you need to explain it to a certain extent it's just I'm not a fan of a character you know just saying hey this is this is what's going on we're just gonna sit here and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk about you know the story you know you need it but at the end of the day i always love the clever ways of basically having exposition scenes and this movie basically even the way they do even the way that i can't even explain it you would need to see it to understand even the way they shoot it is just like ugh, it's kind of lazy and i did like the overall commentary message i'll talk about that more in the spoilers but i thought that was kind of dope one problem i also did have with the movie was some sort of tonal issues that i have to where like there are very very serious moments going on and then all of a sudden there'll be a joke to where like yeah a lot of the times they do hit but sometimes i'm like this is actually a very serious situation like this should be the last time that we're joking 
that was also one issue I did have. It didn't happen that much, but it did happen enough that it did take me out of the movie a few times. But with that being said, this movie's still amazing. I still feel like the performances we get from Lupi Nyong'o and Co are just fantastic. Um, the cinematography, the score is just, just on a different level. Jordan Peele is on a different level with this movie. I do want to see what Jordan Peele can do with something that's not his script because I feel like, I won't say we know what to expect, but we, we kind of have a a headspace or, or you know a jumping off point of what we should expect from Jordan Peele so now I want to see what he can do with somebody else you know penning the script I do feel like the third that kind of wasn't as tight as the first two but you know all in all I did really really enjoy this movie it's not as scary as some people are making it out to be I really just genuinely did not jump as much I jumped like once or twice but I, I definitely think you should watch us as soon as possible therefore I'm going to give us an 8.5 now, I need to talk about spoilers just because this movie, you just need to talk about spoilers. So I'm gonna put a time code right here. All right, so five, four, three, two. All right, bet. Look, so at the end of the movie, we know that um, the original, or who we know as Adelaide, her name is Adelaide, not Adelaide, okay? We're on the map. She, she, what we when we first see her, we first see her as you know this little kid who got who gets lost, and she sees her doppelganger. But as far as we knew, we thought she just ran, and maybe was just scared, uh, scarred from seeing her doppelganger. So where at the end we find out that oh shit, you know her doppelganger, you know took place of her in the real world, and then she became one of the tethers. I did kind of see come, I could kind of tell because um, what was the first time? I can't remember the first time, but towards the end I was like I can pretty much tell like. One, one, one of these something's off between who is the right, who's the real one, and who's a, who's a fake one, quote unquote. And that's kind of where I have a problem with the movie because before then, um, before like you know the first time that the family does come to encounter um, Adelaide Day and Red is the quote unquote tethered one, who we know is should be the real one. Um, there's no real like animosity between them when we first see them. Towards like, I know who you are. You literally took my life. There's less of that. To where, yes, there's the there's the handcuffing to the table, but there's there should have been more of like that animosity, like, oh, you know, you were lucky enough to take my spot, and now, you know, I'm coming for what's rightfully mine. To where, like, it kind of felt like it really could have just that the, the their interaction could have filled with any so any single doppelganger um, relationship. But dope things I did see on the second time watching it, obviously knowing that. The uh, real Adelaide Day uh, is now a tethered one, and the red should be the uh, is now the quote unquote real one. Um, the first time that we see the her parents arguing in the car, she is panting. As far as we know, we thought she was running, you know, scared from something. But now we know she's panting because she is nervous to you know get caught. You know, now that she is she is in the real world, which I thought was really dope. When she panics, when she thinks that she lost Jason, her son, was less about. Oh my god, you know, my son is lost or my son went in there. It was just the fact that like what if his doppelganger took him, which I thought was dope. I know I talked about Red and Adelaide's original confrontation to where um, I felt like there wasn't enough of like the I know you kind of situation to where it felt kind of vague to where um, there is a line that she says, uh, you want me, right? And that line pretty much kind of was like, okay, yeah, I kind of know each other, but I just kind of want more. So speaking of that social message, I did kind of think it was dope to where it's kind of like, to put a bow on it, which is the way I'm interpreting it, basically it will be a nightmare if the underprivileged of the United States, you know, tries to reclaim everything. And, you know, other privileges, whether you take that as race or class, I think it was kind of good that it was vague as whether it was race because, you know, we don't want to beat, Jordan Peele wouldn't want to beat that same dead horse to where like, it's it's basically just like, it would literally be chaos if the underprivileged was to take o was to take over from the privilege in the eyes of Americans in, in this country. So yeah, that's it. This is my US review. I have a lot of reviews coming up. You guys' way, Jesus, I'm almost overwhelmed. So yeah, you guys have a lot coming from me. I had to see this movie twice, I'm sorry. I had to see it, I had to see it twice. I don't wanna spoil anything, but I had to see it twice. All right, I'll see you guys later, peace.